Hi, this is a quick video on how to build a Bolt 180 race quadcopter, available from BoltRC.com. This should also apply to their other race frames like the 210 or 225, as the only difference is the arm length. I'm going to be skipping through a lot of the tedious steps like soldering, so this should assume you know the basics. I will, however, show you how to make a nice minimalistic and pinless build. These are all the parts used for this build. You can swap out the big parts like the motors or ESCs depending on how much power you want. I'll add links to everything in the video description. Okay, so I'm going to get started by prepping the motors. These are the usual DYS-1806-2300 KVs. For a 180 like this, I also recommend motors like these RCX-2205s, but the DYS are a little bit more durable and I have them as spares anyway. DYS don't have an integrated prop adapter, so I'll have to put that on real quick. Just use the small bolts that it comes with, along with some thread lock. Now onto the bottom frame piece. I want to be using it to size up the motor and ESC placement in order to trim these really long motor wires. Hold them about where you want them on the arms and cut the excess cable off. I also recommend trimming the middle wire just a hair shorter than the outer two to make everything even. Repeat for all four motors and then strip about one to two millimeters off the ends and tin them with solder. Now I'm going to solder the motors to the ESCs. I use tin foil to protect my desk mat and then use some electrical tape to hold down the ESC as well as cover it from any potential splatter. These ETW ESCs are sold without motor wires so it saves a step for me. Remove them if you have them attached. You should only have to keep the heat on for a second or two for each wire. Be careful not to heat it up too much. I'm not going to worry about crossing wires or motor direction yet since I can just change it later through BL Heli if they're incorrect. As long as you tend the pads on the ESC and the motor wires correctly, you shouldn't really need any additional solder. Just make sure these are nice smooth connections as you want them to be very secure. At the end you'll end up with nice short motor wires for a very clean look. Just repeat this process for the other motors. I'm going to waterproof the ESCs by coating them in conformal coating. It's very thin, so just brush it on nice and even all over each side of the ESC. All you need is one layer. You can skip this step if you don't care about waterproofing, but I seem to fly in wet grass and snow a lot, so... Dry in about one hour and form a nice glossy hard coating. You'll still have to cover it in heat shrink for isolation and protection. Take the bottom plate out again and make sure you have the slots on the top side. I'm going to be bolting on the motors temporarily with one bolt each because I'm going to be removing everything a little later. This frame accepts both M2 and M3 screws so no worries about that. It's a little messy with all these long wires to so just kind of push them out of the way a little bit for now. Now I'm going to mount the power distribution board to the frame using some nylon hardware. It doesn't matter what size, it's just temporary anyway. I'm going to size up the ESC power wires and cut them to length. Just pay attention to your positive and negatives during this step. For the front too, it helps to have the camera plates installed just to get an idea of the length required. Once everything is cut, I'll trim a little sleeving off the ends and tin them, along with the pads on the PDB. It helps here to have a little bit wider tip than I'm using, but I was a little too lazy to change it. Helps to have a third hand for this. Start connecting your power cables, again paying close attention to the positives and negatives. I'm also going to solder the main battery cables, the VBAT cables for the FC, and two cables in the back for a voltage regular and potentially for LEDs. This is a good time to take out a multimeter and check for shorts using continuity test. No noise is good, and if it beeps, that means you crossed wires somewhere. I'm taking out the motor screws and nylon hardware here in order to be able to get to the bottom of the PDB so I can coat it in liquid tape. This insulates it and protects it from water. It's a little messy, so I'm going to be doing it off camera. Here it is after a finished drying. 
I coated the top and bottom and also added some hot glue to the connections to secure them a little more. I'm going to add the remainder of the M2 motor screws to the motors, this time with some thread locker. I ended up not recording those motor screws because I tend to drop them way too often. I'm going to now fully install the PDB using nylon hardware. Basically a longer screw on the bottom through the frame, one washer to space the PDB, and a 10mm standoff on top. Moving over to my vise, it's time to start prepping some components like this X4R receiver. I'm going to be removing all of these heavy and useless pins. Start by trimming them down, leaving just enough left so you can grab them with tweezers. Flip it over and grab the pin from below with tweezers. Just touch it briefly with your iron and it should come right out. Sometimes with a little force. Remove all the pins. When you're done, you'll need to clear out these three holes for S-Bus. I just use compressed air. It clears them up pretty easy. I direct wire these the same as you would do regular pins. It helps to pre-tin them as well. I will also add some hot glue around them to secure them when done, as the wires can break around the base without it. Here it is covered with conformal coating and the wires along with the smart port cable glued in. Cover it up with some heat shrink and it's done. Moving on to the infamous NAS32 Rev6. I'm going to be plugging in my newly heat shrinked X4R into the SBUS and smart port connections, which are a little unusual on this board, so I'll add a link with a little more detail on that. It's much easier if you use an F3 flight controller. And here I'm just soldering around some power wires to the adjustable voltage regulator. This is a spare 3 amp one I had, but you can also use a D sun or Pululu. Now with that regulator plugged into the main harness with nothing else attached, you want it to adjust the screw until it reads 8 volts. This is going to be powering the camera, receiver, VTX, and NAS, which can all happily take that input voltage. You'll also want to add some glue to this screw when you're finished adjusting, just so it stays at that reading. Here's everything connected along with the wiring diagram. I'll add a link that explains why I chose 8 volts. Note that I'm also not using an LC filter here, as I like to take my chances to see if I need one before adding it. I also added a short pigtail for a buzzer, since I seem to have lost my buzzer and I need to buy another one. I'll cut that off later. I also put some hot glue on the camera and VTX connectors as they tend to fall out pretty easy in crashes. Here's everything attached. It looks a little messy now, but we'll fix that. I trimmed down and tinned the ESC signal wires, so they're ready to be direct wired to the FC. Just wire motors 1 through 4 to the correct pins. Also attach the VBAT wires and hot glue everything when finished. I coated the FC with conformal coating as well, so almost everything is now waterproof. Don't worry if to rework something, the coating can be peeled off or burned easy. There's a little bit of hot glue around the USB port and all the connections underneath as well. Go ahead and bolt it to the standoffs using the small nylon screws. This setup depends on BL Heli pass through for configuration, but you can also use small alligator clamps if you need to flash your ESCs. Now we can finally move on to finishing the frame assembly. It's important with these bolt race frames to orientate them in the correct direction. Like this rear spline piece needs to have the longer tab facing up and towards the rear. Tolerances are pretty tight, so make sure everything sits flush. The front camera plates are next. They have a small notch on the rear side for the wires to fit, and the longer tab will be on top. They also have two different hole options for the camera. The front holes allow a higher camera angle. You can use the screws that come with the camera now to bolt it in on the sides. Personally, I just glue it in at a fixed camera angle. It's a little more reliable. 
Now take the titanium bolts with the conical washers and start installing the aluminum standoffs. There's only four total with a fifth optional one in the middle of the frame. Top plate goes on next. It only fits on one way as the rear plate is offset a little bit. Front and rear bumpers are now going on. They provide a little extra carbon reinforcement. You can also consider using some CA glue to permanently glue these on. Put the VTX antenna connector through the plates now. Mine has an unusually long coax cable since it's one of the early model race bands that I got for cheap. And then finally, put the top bolts in and finish up by tightening everything top and bottom. I'm using 3M double-sided tape that's included with the bolt frame kit to mount the regulator, receiver, VTX, and ESCs to the frame. Pretty strong stuff. I also recommend 3M VHB5952 for this, or just zip ties and electrical tape. Sometimes double-sided tape by itself isn't quite enough for the ESCs in the arm, so you want to put electrical tape or some other kind of tape around it to hold it securely. I'm not putting that on right now, so I'm probably going to wrap it with some vinyl later. Route the antennas through the holes in the top plate and screw on the VTX antenna. You can cross the receiver antennas behind and tape them up, or you can run zip ties through the holes and heat shrink them. Just make sure they're in a V-shape, and technically the further from the VTX antenna, the better range you'll get. I've been using this setup for a while, and it still seems to outrange my video feed. After that, pretty much all there is left to install is the props. I highly recommend using lock nuts for this, or aluminum low profile lock nuts if you have short prop shafts. I also recommend getting all clockwise motors, that way you don't have to worry about any reverse threaded shafts. I'm leaving these bolts loose for now as it still needs some configuration and clean flight. And that's pretty much it. Here are some close up detail shots. I'm going to tuck the wire in a little later when I get a buzzer and cut off that big connector. Still have a ton of room inside. I might just move the RX over the FC to have everything centralized. I'll be running with the 4S 1300 milliamp battery strapped to the bottom. Normally I'd show a video of it flying at the end, but it's like negative degrees here and really windy. Instead, enjoy a punch out from my Bolt 210. Engine.